Okay, so today we're going to dive a little deeper into the futures market, going to expand upon the original spot versus derivatives video that I had previously done. So to explain the chart that we're looking at, we have an overlay of all the different uh, Bitcoin futures markets. The black line is going to represent spot and then all the other lines are going to represent your futures contracts. Indicator down here is showing us the basis between spot and futures. Um, which is just simply put, that's just the difference. So showing you how far away um, the two are from one another, which leads us into the concept that we need to introduce to everybody that makes sure everybody understands, which is contango and backwardation. Contango is when futures contracts trade ahead of spot and backwardation is when futures contracts trade below spot. And it's kind of indicative of the sentiment of the market because futures contracts um, are supposed to, you know, represent the future value of an asset. So when futures are trading below spot, it tells you that the market's bearish. And when futures are trading ahead of spot, it tells you that obviously that they're bullish. With Bitcoin, for instance, we trade in contango the majority of the time. Um, at least that's been my experience. Um, we can see that on the higher time frame, what real contango can look like where all the contracts are trading at very large premium to spot. And then we can see what a much more stable and healthy market looks like where they're trading much more closely together. Uh, this just shows you how bullish the market was at, at the top and, um, you know, kind of how we're in disbelief still. Um, so yeah, measuring when you're far into contango or when, when you go into backward, uh, backwardation is a, a pretty great tool. Um, it can support a trade thesis um, pretty well. Uh, normally, since we trade in contango, contango the majority of the time, you don't want to, you know, short because you're in contango necessarily. You need to see extreme contango. But with backwardation, we don't really go into it all that often. Um, so, like currently, you know, I would say the best example of this was the um, pre, you know, the current trends low, right here where every major contract traded in a backwardation except for FTX. Um, this was a really good example of how to use it as a trade thesis because structurally it's a good long. Um, well, I mean, not necessarily price action because this price action was rough, but you know, you're still trading within the range. So you're just trading a range deviation and then, um, you know, you have the backwardation confluence. So, um, you know, it represents a good trade thesis. So my comparison I want to make is it's just like how you can use funding the same way, um, but you have to be careful because funding can stay positive irrationally or negative irrationally for a long time. The same thing can happen with um, these contracts trading ahead of or, be or below, but they will ultimately eventually lead to um, direction the other way. So um, yeah, there's really not too much else to go over. Uh, I just recommend people start to watch these things and don't necessarily, you know, base any trade thesis off of it until you've watched it for a while and have gotten more comfortable with it. But um, yeah, look for these opportunities like today where OKX traded into backwardation um, temporarily, which um, I took as a sign to uh, close out my hedge and go back to being long again because it just seems odd to go into backwardation here. And ultimately, it either means one of two things, that either this is a very well-informed trader and uh, the top is in and, I'm, you know, things aren't going to go very well for everybody, or this was just an inefficient uh, execution on that contract and um, it's going to lead to more upside. So I'm hoping for more upside, but ultimately prepared for either situation. But um, I think that's a pretty good lesson, so we'll leave it there.